As some of you may have heard already, uh, recently there's been some public controversy over the treatment of tobacco in the TPP. Uh, New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg recently had a, uh, an opinion piece in the New York Times saying, why is Obama caving on tobacco? And in his telling, a previous draft of the agreement had a safe harbor provision that would make sure that governments could regulate tobacco, but now the Obama administration has bowed to pressure from the tobacco industry and gotten rid of this provision. Uh, the New York Times itself, the editorial board, also had, had a piece uh, called The Hazard of Free Trade Tobacco, where they argue that tobacco ought to be excluded from these trade rules. Um, they say reducing trade barriers to tobacco would increase tobacco consumption, lead to additional deaths. Now, this all seems kind of odd, probably, that the, the Obama administration is being accused of going soft on tobacco. I mean, in the, early in the first term, they pushed hard for domestic regulation of tobacco. Um, would they really be caving into the tobacco, the corporate tobacco lobby now? Let's look at the facts of what's going on here. Well, in terms of the, the trade technicalities, the basic story is the following. Anti-tobacco groups have long been calling for a carve-out of tobacco uh, from trade agreements. And last year, USTR seemed willing to, to push for a mildly strong proposal in this regard. So what I have up here is, is uh, USTR's description of it, not the actual test, text. Um, I haven't seen the actual, actual text. There's that secrecy issue I was talking about earlier. Um, so the quote here is just USTR's description of it. My understanding of what it would do, the key aspect is that it would make it easier uh, to satisfy the exceptions of trade agreements. So for you trade wonks out, wonks out there, it would be something less than a necessity test. So it's easier to satisfy the exceptions. But it would not have been a complete carve out of tobacco from trade rules. For one thing, it only applied to regulation, not legislation. And I'm still a little fuzzy on this, but it wouldn't apply to all of the investment rules, maybe to some, but not to others. So it, it would not be a complete carve out, but it might make trade challenges to, uh, to tobacco regulation more difficult. Last month, USTR abandoned this approach, and they came up with a new proposal, uh, where instead of having easier to satisfy exceptions, they would just have a provision clarifying that uh, the general exceptions already in trade agreements apply to tobacco health measures, which everyone kind of already knew, but they would just specify it. Um, it would also have a, an additional uh, consultation mechanism when a tobacco measure is at issue. And it clarified that we would continue to, pre pro to promote, um, to press for the elimination of tariffs. So the reaction to this proposal has been very negative. And that's what I was quoting uh, uh, earlier for Mayor Bloomberg in the New York Times. Mayor Bloomberg hates it. The New York Times hates it. Anti-tobacco groups hate it. They're all upset about it. But in addition to that, business groups don't like it either. Even this weak proposal is too much for them. They don't want to single out tobacco. Uh, they think it's a slippery slope. If we start excluding tobacco, what other products are going to be next? So, so they're not happy with it either. Um, it basically, it seems impossible to make the two sides happy. One side wants much more. The other side wants much less. Well, how do you, how do you resolve that? And then to complicate things further, further, Malaysia has come out and said, well, we'd like a complete carve-out, actually. Still a little unclear to me what they mean by that, a carve-out from everything, including the investment rules, including from tariffs. I'm, I'm not absolutely sure about that, but they want a much stronger carve-out. OK, so in response to the negotiating mess on this issue, here's the substantive question I think we should be asking. So do, do we need a carve-out for tobacco, partial or, or full? Do we need any kind of carve out? And I have a slightly different take on this, I think, than either the New York Times and that side or the business groups on the other side. I have a different framework for thinking about it. The question I would ask is, a carve out from what? Are you talking about a carve out from rules that limit protectionism, like eliminating tariffs? Or are you talking about a carve out from some of the broader trade rules that deal with domestic policy issues? And I think you have to address these two issues separately. There are different implications from, from each one. Let me start with the protectionism issue. It's never been clear to me why people want to carve out tobacco from anti-protectionism rules like eliminating tariffs or the national treatment rule. Why would you want to create a domestic monopoly or oligopoly uh, to keep out foreign competitors? I'm not sure how that, help, that helps uh, with public health regulation. If you want to discourage smoking by raising the price of cigarettes, well, there's no need for a tariff. Just tax the product with a non-discriminatory tax that applies to, to all products. This is perfectly legal under trade rules. Uh, there's no need for a carve out here that I could see, that I could see. You just get rid of all the tariffs. And yes, if you want to raise the, the price of cigarettes, you, you can tax all cigarettes. So that issue to me, I think is pretty easy. A little harder is one about a carve out from other TPP rules, other trade rules that aren't about protectionism. Some examples are uh, intellectual property protections that deal with patents, copyrights, and 
particular to, to particular interest to tobacco is trademarks. And then certain aspects of the rules on foreign investment that protect foreign companies by allowing them to sue governments before an international tribunal. As for applying a carve out to these rules, I think that critics may be missing the bigger picture here. Their underlying argument is that these rules interfere with national autonomy uh, by getting in the way of legitimate domestic regulations. Um, but this is a problem that applies beyond tobacco. It applies to all domestic policy. So an argument that these rules are only a problem for tobacco, and therefore we need a, a carve out for tobacco, is a strange one, I think. In a sense, it's an argument that it's fine for international trade law to interfere with non-tobacco related public health re regulation, but we can't have it interfere with tobacco related public health regulation. So I say no carve out here either. If you want to reform the, the trade rules in question, that's fine. And I think that's where the focus should be. And I think this is a great opportunity to, to talk about those rules. But I don't think tobacco is as unique as some people suggest. And I think coming up with special rules for it is more of a distraction than a solution. So let me, let me sum this up and bring it all back to the big picture of the TPP's prospects. I think it's clear that there's a big, messy debate going on here with the tobacco issue. And I, I look at this as perhaps a microcosm of the overall TPP debate. This seems like one of many issues that could get in the way of a completed deal, certainly by the end of the year, which seems wildly unrealistic. But even, even in the future, I think it's going to be very difficult. Uh, you know, we, we've already mentioned others like the investment rules, the intellectual property rules, state-owned enterprises. Currency manipulation is going to be extremely difficult, I think. Um, can the TPP countries really work all this out? And if so, is Congress going to si sign off on it? I, I have serious doubts about all of it. And to bring up secrecy again, well, I'm skeptical of the secrecy allegations. I can see how they would have some traction in the current environment. Uh, I see why the, the people who are talking about secrecy are, are talking about it. As much as I dismiss it, yeah, it, it might play well to a general audience. So, so for me, the answer to the question in the title of the event, and I think you know, Dan gave away my, my conclusion here, it's a long slog at best. Um, I don't want to con condemn the TPP as the next Doha round yet. The Doha round is the, the round of WTO negotiations started in 2001. It's been going on for over a decade, and it's not looking good. Um, but I think government officials should be wary of putting forth these promised end dates that are constantly missed. If they do, I think the TPP starts to look a little bit more like Doha, and that's probably not a good sign. <laughs>